All right, so it's been a couple of days. I'm back home. I had to run from the folks place. Um, and I've spent a little bit of time having to think about the things that I might need to do to get this Ducati 848 back to its former glory. So I went and consulted the Oracle document, which is the owner's manual, and have basically used the 24,000K service as a guideline, rough idea of the things I'm going to do. Um, I've done up a list of jobs to be done, uh, things that I think will probably need to be done on the bike, um, based off that. And I've gone through my local Ducati dealer's website and got an idea of price of what it's gonna cost me to do this using genuine parts. Some of it's a little bit up there. Um, I've, I've separated the cost of things into a need, a maybe, and an optional, um, depending on when I pull the bike apart. If it might need something, it might not. I, not too sure yet um, until I can get back up there and throw a couple of spanners on it. But I'll go through what I've got um, and yeah, I'll make this available. Um, I think it could be handy. It's got a lot of part numbers and stuff listed um, in some things that aren't so easy to find without a parts interpreter. Um, so yeah, first things first, um, I'm going to be changing all of the fluids. So starting with the engine oil. Um, you can use anywhere from a 10 winter to a 20 winter, 10 weight to a 20 weight, uh, 40 to 50. Um, I'm probably going to go on the higher end of that just because of the way the cams are, the hollow cams on the bike. Um, they pretty much need to fill up when you start the bike, so you you know, got to go for a proper cold start process. So um, up the viscosity a little bit on that and make it nice and fluid for, uh, for the engine to run with. I live up in basically the tropics anyway, so um, it's definitely not going to get too cold um, for a high weight oil. Um, oil filter, so I'm going to get a kit with that that comes with a new sump plug washer. And also on the need list, I don't really need this, um, but I have put a oil filter socket on there for the bike too, which will be a 76 millimeter eight flute. Um, if you're interested in getting one of those, I don't really need it. I've done the oil change on it before without that, but I'm going to be doing it. So 17 bucks, who cares? Um, so next on the list is clean the engine oil pickup filter. That's at actually 36,000 K service item, which is, they do every second service, every second lube service. So they're 12,000 intervals, 12, 36, um, so yeah, I'll do that anyway because the bike's been sitting for ages and I don't know if it's ever been done. Um, so I'll check that. Uh, check the engine oil pressure. I'll just borrow a pressure gauge for that. It's not too hard. Um, an extra that I've listed in there is I'm going to replace the fuel filter. Um, there's fuel in it. It smells pretty rancid. I popped the tank open and had a smell. Um, if I'm going to be pulling the whole thing apart to do this, I might as well throw a new uh, fuel filter in there. It's not listed um, anywhere on the service schedule for the bike um, at any stage, at any age. So I'm guessing they're expecting a lot of longevity out of it, but it's a $53 part, genuine. Um, just do it. I'm just going to do it while I'm, while I'm in there. I have listed that as an optional though. So if you are looking at this um, sheet, you don't have to have that in there if you don't want to. Um, so next is probably the biggest item um, time-wise on the list is to check and adjust, adjust the valve clearances. Well, I've done similar things on a car, not on a bike, especially not while the engine's in the frame. I have no plans of pulling the engine out of the frame. Hopefully I don't have to do that. Um, th it's going to be time-consuming. It's not rocket science it's not total major surgery type stuff but it's pretty involved um the benefit of it is i'm going to be in there anyway i'm not just going to be pulling the bike apart to do that i'm going to be doing heaps of other stuff as you'll see on the list so it's not too bad um so one of the things that i've got in the need column of uh costs is a set of offset feeler gauges um that they're angled um just to help you get in it's kind of a funny angle to get into these things um, and that kit will get me from 0.05 to 0.25 millimeters, 
um, which is basically the tolerance range um, that you're going to be needing to deal with when you're in there. A lot of feeler gauge kits are too thick. Um, that's, that's pretty thin. Um, so while I'm in there, I will be doing the timing belts as well. Uh, timing belt kit from Ducati, 103 bucks. Um, clean and check the spark plugs is what is listed. I'm just going to replace them anyway because they'll already be in there. And as far as I know, they're 10 years old. So um, I didn't price those out from the dealership because they were 50 something bucks each. And I went to another website and they can be had on special for 43 bucks for the pair. So um, I'll put that in there. If you're interested in this sheet as well, I've got links to all of the parts and um, tools. Any cost item that's on here has got a, a website link to it so you can go and check it out. Um, next on the list is change the air filter, which is a 24,000k service item, but I have already done it. Um, and it's not that long ago before I stored the bike, I had probably only put maybe a thousand Ks on that air filter. So it should be okay. Just pull it out, clean it, clean it should be fine. Um, if I do need to replace it, it's not that big a deal. I think a filter's 80 bucks or something like that, but I haven't got that on there cause I don't need it. Um, I do have the part number there though. Um, if you need it. Um, next is check throttle body synchronization and idle speed setting. I don't think I need any special tools or anything for that. Um, I'll be in there anyway. Next item, um, which is a 36,000 K item. Also to note too, when you're looking at this, this can be interpreted as 36,000 Ks or 36 months. Um, a lot of people don't do that, but when you're talking about fluids, three years for fluids is kind of a bit, especially if they're under stress. Um, 10 years is definitely way too long to be having any of these fluids still in there. Um, that's obviously assuming that you've got an 08 bike and it hasn't had any of its fluids fully changed yet. So um, I will be doing the brake and clutch fluid and I'll be using a uh, Motul oil for that. Um, a dot four, half a litre should be enough. Um, using the 660 if anyone's inter interested in that. Um, as far as bleeding kits goes, I'm not going to use a pump because I've spoken to a lot of people and read a lot of reviews online. Um, using suction in those systems tends to generate air bubbles. I don't know why exactly that is. Um, I don't really think that it's necessary to have like a pump style suction gun on these anyway. So I'm just going to run some five mil tubing out of the bleeder valves. Um, down to the ground, container on the ground essentially. And as long as the end of that hose stays in the fluid, you're gonna be fine. You shouldn't be sucking up any air or anything anyhow. Um, so the brake fluid is 40 bucks for half litre. The Nolan tubing is like nine, 10 bucks from Bunnings. Um, next on the list is check and adjust the brake and clutch control cables. That's fairly straightforward. Do that with some spanners. Uh, next is check and lubricate the throttle and choke cables, no big deal. Uh, next is check tire pressure and wear. Now I have a Pirelli Super Corsa SP on the front of that that's definitely due to be replaced. Uh, it's probably barely road legal. Um, on the back I have a Michelin, I believe it's a Pilot Sport something, I don't know. It's a dual compound tire anyway. I put it on when I was down in Bathurst. I was doing um, doing laps around Bathurst and I completely melted the Pirelli that was on there. Uh, and the only thing that was reasonably close um, that the bike shop could put on there for me was a Michelin tire. They didn't have any Pirellis at all, which I thought was crazy, being that they are only a few kilometers from one of Australia's, probably Australia's most famous open access racetrack. Anyway, I didn't like that tire at all. Um, I took it around the track. It was drizzling and pretty cold that morning when I took it around with the Michelin and I could not get any temperature to stay in it. And I couldn't get any confidence out of it. It was chattering. I didn't like it at all. So I basically rode it home. Um, from Bathurst back up to Queensland and 
didn't really use it after that. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, so for the service item, check tire and pressure and wear, I'm just gonna throw a brand new set of Pirelli Super Corsa SPs on. Uh, front's about 270, rear's 370-ish. Um, so that's that's a bit of a hit, but they're, you know I mean, they're great tires. It's gonna happen anyway. Um, next is check brake pads and renew if necessary. I don't know actually how these pads are going to be. I will probably just replace them anyway due to age, but I mean, the bike hasn't done any serious track work or anything like that. I think the pads are going to be pretty good. Um, but if I do replace them, 225 for the front, 65 for the rear. Um... Next on the list, check the steering head bearings. No big deal. There is a special tool for that. Uh, we should be able to get away with rigging something up, doing something else. Um, next is check the drive chain tension alignment and lubrication. That's no big deal. Um, next is check the clutch disc back and renew if necessary. Hopefully the clutch is still fine. It was fine when I rode it last and I never had any issues. Um, if I do need a new clutch pack, Genuine is 577 bucks. For about 800, I could get um, something like a Duca bike um, wet slipper, which could be a bit of fun. But I, you know, I'm pricing all of this out using Genuine parts. It's more kind of along the style of a restoration than barn find a bike and upgrade it. Um, so I'll deal with that when I come to it, but that's on the maybe list. Um, also in there under that, I've put in a service bulletin that came out about the shift selector. Some people are having issues on these bikes um, with having gears get stuck. Apparently the inside behind the clutch pack, um, there's a lever in there that was not, well, I don't know, spec properly from factory and they've released an updated part for that um i haven't had an issue the part itself the update part is 78 bucks um i'll have a look at it and i'll check and just you know feel how the bike's shifting i suppose um i don't think i'll need it but part of me wants to sort of get a comparison photo between the two parts so i can see to just to see if this has actually been done in the past because it was quite early in the bike's life that this bulletin came out. So it may have already been done. Um, same thing with the radiator, which is the next issue on the list. Um, change the coolant and replace the radiator. I have a defective radiator, which is very common issue on these early model 848s and 1098s. Um, there was a recall um, where Ducati was essentially giving away a replacement radiator that had been re-engineered, um, which means you need, as far as I'm aware, you need new hoses as well. Um, the top left bracket had been re-engineered. It was a weak spot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to jump on that bandwagon. I didn't have any issues with it, and my bike didn't go back to a dealership service within the time frame for that. Um, of course, after that finished, I then got a pinhole leak in the top left of my radiator. And it actually shot me in the eyeball one day when I was servicing the bike and heating it up. I blipped the throttle and pressurized the system and it shot me right in the eyeball because I had the fairings off. So I need to fix that. I know where the hole is. I haven't decided if I'm going to fix it or get a aftermarket replacement or get a second hand one. What I probably will not be doing though is buying one from Ducati because those things are expensive. Um, on the Ducati website, Ducati Brisbane, which is effectively my local dealer, they have a list price of that radiator without the hoses of $1,700, which is a lot of money for a tiny little piece of aluminium with some fins in it. It's <laughs> crazy. So um, I've allowed $300 in this price column. It's a must. I know I have to get it done. So that's either going to cover a repair or an aftermarket replacement or a secondhand genuine one. I think 300 bucks should pretty much cover it. 
Um, anyway, moving on, so I need some coolant and distilled water and stuff to go with that. Next is, while I'm down there, checking the operation of the electric fans and the sealing off of the coolant circuit. So, I mean, I'll be doing that anyway because I'll be changing the radiator and the hoses. No big deal. Um, next is check the rear wheel cush drive and check the wheel hub bearings. That's no big deal. I'll probably just repack those. Um, check the indicators and lighting. Now I have to find the rear view mirrors for my bike because I don't know where they are. <laughs> they weren't there when I was looking around in the garage. Um, I had the fairings popped off it um, for some reason years ago and the nose cone is just sitting there and the mirrors aren't on top. So I have to find those. Hopefully I don't have to buy them because if I do, I'm probably just gonna crack it and turn this thing into a track bike anyway. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure they'll be around somewhere. Um, next, just nut and bolt everything. Check the tightness of the nuts and bolts securing the engine to the frame. Uh, next is check the side stand. Now, when I was in Bathurst, I did have a little whoopsie coming out of a driveway. And one of the resultant effects of that whoopsie was to put a little scratch on the tip of the kickstand or the side stand. And it also damaged the switch. There's a switch that when you put the stand down, I'm sure any 848 or other Ducati owners know, most bikes really. When you put the stand down, if you're in gear, it'll shut the bike off. Um, that switch on mine is damaged and that circuit is now not effective. The guys at the at the uh, sorry motorbike shop in Bathurst did that for me. Um, so if I decide to replace that, which I probably won't, um, new side stand genuine three hundred and five bucks, and the switch one eighty five. So cool, five hundred bucks to take care of a scratch and a switch on on a stand. Um, anyway, moving on, check the tightness of the front wheel axle nut. So you need some large sockets for that and same for the rear. Um, check all of the external fuel hoses, no big deal. Uh, next is change the front fork oil, um, which is a 36,000K item, but again, I'm doing it due to age. So for that, I'm gonna use the um, 7.5 weight um, Motul factory line fork oil. Um, there's 498, I think, um, mil in each side. So a litre should be fine, supposing I don't have any spillages. So a litre of that's 30 bucks. And while I'm in there, I'm going to do a front fork overhaul. Um, the overhaul set is 147 bucks. Just to do the seals alone is 125 genuine parts. So might as well overhaul them while I'm in there, put new shims and all that sort of stuff in there. Um, bring them back to life. Um, so then checking for oil leaks on the front forks and the rear shock. Um, check the front sprocket retaining bolts, no worries. Um, general lubing and greasing, I'll be doing a lot of that. Um, check and recharge the battery. I know there is a brand new battery there for it, but again, it's a few years old, so I don't know how the shelf life of that's gonna be. It hasn't even been pulled out of the box yet. I'll have a look, but I don't mind the idea of getting one of those new lightweight batteries anyway. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, so next is another interesting issue, road test the motorcycle. That's the last item on the list. Um, now, because the bike has not been ridden or registered for a few years in Queensland, it's quite an expensive process. So to go through the re-registration process, you need a roadworthy certificate here in Queensland and I'm sure with most other places around the world. Um, so that's gonna probably be about 150 bucks. Um, registration, I did a quote online with Queensland Transport. So 12 months with a new plate, which I'll have to do, and a new rego surcharge, because it's basically a new rego is $760. So to get the bike on the road after I've done all of the other stuff is gonna be an extra grand. Um, I've got a bit of stuff in the extras um, section here that most of them are optional, um, but I will need some liquid gasket. That's 43 bucks, three bond 12, 15. 
Um, in the other optional stuff, I've got a genuine rear and genuine front paddock stand. That will make things easier for me to work on the bike. However, I have seen a clever little hack online with a guy who's using um, axle stands off a car um, under his rear sets, and I don't have folding rear sets, I've replaced them. So maybe I can do that and save myself an extra, what's that, $726 for those. Um, and then also I'm gonna need some digital calipers um, just to check some tolerances and stuff when I'm probably replacing shims in the motor. So the bottom line, which is a little bit scary. So all the stuff that's in the need column to get the service done, $1,579. Remembering that's allowing 300 for a radiator replacement or repair or whatever, not a genuine $1,700 radiator. Um, in the maybe pile, which is stuff like the clutch and the brake pads, that's an extra 1,089 if I need to do those as well. Everything in the optional pile, which is rego, front and rear stands, calipers, um, and the side stand is an extra $2,309. So all up, if I do everything and get myself some nice genuine front and rear paddock stands and go and do the roadworthy side of things and put this thing back on the road and not just use it as a track bike, we come to a grand total of $4,977, <laughs> which is pretty out there. Um, you can go on bike sales and buy one of these things with a full service history for about eight or 10 grand at the moment. So that's pretty extreme. Um, I also have a patch to do on my left hand fairing uh, where I had that little whoopsie in Bathurst. So with a respray, Getting this thing back to its form of glory is going to be somewhere around the order of eight grand if I do all of that stuff. Keeping in mind that's using genuine parts from the Ducati dealership down the road. Um, I'm sure I can scrimp and scrape, save a little bit here and there by using some aftermarket stuff. Um, a lot of the genuine stuff you can get aftermarket without the Ducati stamp on it anyway. It's the same part. It's an interchangeable part number. Um, so I'll have a look at that and do a little bit more research, but I just thought that was interesting. I mean, to do a full overhaul on this thing, um, you know, maybe, okay, take out the stands and stuff like that. You're still looking at like four grand, which is pretty substantial. Um, so yeah, <laughs> bear with me. It's going to be an interesting journey. Um, I'm going to try and film everything that I do on the bike. I'm planning on doing this over probably a three day period. Um, I'll break it down into as many little components of this list as possible. And like I said, I'll make this list available um, if anyone wants it. Um, if you can see how it works, I've just got like check boxes and prices listed in there. You know, need, maybe, and optional columns. Um, so yeah, I hope you are interested in sticking along for the journey. It's going to be pretty interesting and Hopefully I can keep it interesting for you. All right. Thanks for tuning in guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.